Hello, everybody, and welcome back to this week's edition of The Lead-In. Once again, I am Mr. Leedles, here to run down the weekly happenings of the Extreme Indoor League of Football. And this week is a bit tamer than previous weeks, mostly due to a very, very short schedule for week 14, most of bye weeks happening. But before we start, we want to run down what happened week 13. The first major game was, of course, the Burbank Fuzzchins getting a, what some would consider an upset over Massillon Mistakes, 41-35. to 35. Very big game for the entire American conference, as this helped Horsington stay alive, as well as Orlando and Santa Clara, while also putting a tie for first place alongside Mobile. We'll get into that in just a moment. Uh, game two was Hartford defeating Hell 59-35. This not, doesn't eliminate Hell. They're not that far back, but it definitely helps out Hartford. Is now They are number one in their division tied alongside the Patrol, both seven and five. It was a very weird game for the Razors because they never really got off of the starting gun. They had a few good moments, but it was a very defensive struggle for them. They weren't able to do much while Hartford just kept tur- getting turnovers. It was less a poor day for their QB and more just Hartford's defense showed up in spades. In the no com stream game, the Pittsburgh South Fries defeated Akiabara 50-34 to in a game I can't even begin to describe. I... It was a traditional Pittsburgh game, somehow amplified even more because it's supposed to be the chill part of XLF, and instead we were just dealing with their usual shit. Uh, to note of this game, even with their victory over Akihabara, Pittsburgh are the first team gone from playoffs. Eliminated. They, at 4-8, and eight, have no chance of making playoffs thanks to the victory from Burbank. The best they could do is go to 8-4, and four, but because of their tiebreaker record against Massillon and Horsington, as well as Memphis, they are officially out of playoffs. Honestly, I'm surprised it didn't happen sooner. These guys were jokes of teams since the beginning of the season. Like, we made fun of them a lot because we just, their stuff was infuriating to put up with. But even beyond just the jokes, they were bad. They were really, really bad. Which is amazing to think about, considering their star players weren't bad. It was two wide receivers, which isn't horrible. If you have a dual threat, it can really help. But when your QB doesn't do anything, and when your defense is as bad as it was, you can't really succeed. And that showed in terms of how quickly they fell off. And now, how they are the first team eliminated. Somehow the only team eliminated. Going into non-stream games, Memphis beat Santa Clara 45-40, all but securing them a playoff spot. They need one more win to secure it. I believe they do not play Week 16, so we will find that out Week 15. Uh, just this has been a dominant season for Memphis. If they like, it's not even possible for them to miss playoffs. I don't think at this point, on eleven and one, they would lose out to at most eleven and five, which means Massillon, Horsington, Mobile, and Burbank would have to win out to even have a chance of Memphis not being in it. So, congrats to them for essentially securing themselves a number one, at worst number two seed in playoffs. For Santa Clara, though, a very tough loss. It brings them down to 5-7 and seven on the brink of elimination. They need to essentially win out at this point. And considering there's only going to be four games left for them, 9-7 and seven may end up being good enough for playoffs. It may cost them in the end. That's the same thing to be said for Orlando to jump around a bit, who ended up losing in overtime to the Steeds, 43-37. to 37. Both of these teams suffering tough losses to top teams of the division. I think that's sort of the story that has been throughout this entire season is 
they've gone through tough losses that have barely held them back. Because both teams aren't bad. Orlando's had their weird moments, and Santa Clara have had losses they maybe shouldn't have taken. But they're not bad teams. They're just caught in a very, very strong division where three of the six teams are going to be more likely than not going to playoffs. At worst, one of those teams falls off. Uh, jumping back in order, Tampa Bay defeated Chattanooga 63-20. to It keeps Tampa Bay's season alive. At 4-7, and seven, they can still feasibly win out. They play week 14. They've already gone through their bye week. So they have five games. They could win out and make playoffs. But I think one loss, eliminate, if I remember correctly, and I'll get to this on the week 14 rundown, I think they're one loss away from being eliminated. The Rosemont versus Mode defeat Topeka 45-44 somehow saving their season when really they shouldn't even be winning. They were 2-9 and nine going into that. They should have been. The only reason they weren't eliminated is because their division is very, like, not, in, I can't say that they don't want to win. That's more National West. It's more they're at a bad state of Florida City's coming off of this break that they're starting to slip up. Topeka, Sioux Falls, and Portland are all in this weird pack of just trying to make it while now New England and Rosemont have a very small chance, but a chance nonetheless of making playoffs. I think it'd be funny if they made it just because the story of these teams were garbage and now suddenly one of them, if not both, are in playoffs. I just don't see it happening. The good news for them, I guess, is they have a bye week this week, so they can't outright be eliminated, as far as I know. But it still isn't looking pretty for them. A win over Topeka does more so hurt Topeka than anything. That was now it ties them with Sioux Falls and Portland. All three teams desperately just trying to stay close, not to Florida City at this point, but close to the National West leaders. If they could stay within that 7-5 and five pack, maybe they'll be getting in. I don't know what the basis of it would be, but they'd have a chance to go in. The Mobile Rumble beat Encino 58-27. Because of the Tampa Bay win, Encino aren't out yet, but once again with Tampa, get to that during Week 14's rundown. New, uh, Sioux Falls beat New England 70-54. And it's the same coverage for Rosemont. They're both 3-9 and nine now. So it's almost a battle of who's going to be the bottom because unless the Razors keep falling like they have and manage to sneak into there with only five wins, so it'll basically be a 5-11 and 11 season, these two are the top contenders for that that bottom, basically the, the basement bowl of this league where it's the final two Sorry, the two lowest ranked teams getting to compete for almost fun of it. You don't really have to watch, but it's just funny to see these two teams that are complete car wrecks being able to play before the playoffs. So, I mean, part of me hopes we get to see New England and Rosemont play again just so we can laugh at them more, but if they don't, It'll just come down to who has a stronger schedule, I feel, because somehow Rosemont's gotten a win while New England's actually trying to stay true to the tank. Uh, that horsey, or the Florida City men losing to Patrol 44-6 to marks the second loss in a row for Florida City, putting them at 8-3. and three. They were coming off the break at 8-1 and one and had another bye week. They are forced to be playing on week 14. If they lose again especially to Sioux Falls, they may be in a lot of trouble for playoffs. They need to get their they need to get themselves back in gear, back in focus to stay ahead cuz right now they're one loss away from being only a game ahead of the two top National West teams, meaning they may end up being a third seed. Or even beyond that, they could lose 
And it puts, if they do lose, Sioux Falls two games behind them, Topeka and Portland two and a half games behind. They're not as safe as they probably think they are for playoffs, and that's going to be the scary part for them. Uh, finally, of week 13, Portland defeating Victoria 49-42, ending the streak Victoria was having. I believe it was two games in a row that they won to save themselves from elimination. This loss isn't the worst thing to happen to them, though. They, just because of the West being so weak, they have a good shot of making playoffs. Out of a four games that they play, just win two of them and hope Hartford and the Patrol collapse as teams, then you could probably make it in. As a quick rundown, week 14, there's only four games due to the bye week. The main one of note, the first stream game of the night, it's Encino versus Buffalo. If Buffalo wins this game, it puts them at 8-4, and four, which ties them with Mobile and Burbank, but it also eliminates Tampa Bay and Encino both from playoff contention. Due to tiebreakers, they will both be be able to tie, but they'll be out just based on the fact that they've lost consistently to those top three teams. It's must win for both teams. If I had to pick, it'd probably be Buffalo just because if it was Tampa, at least you could say they have the momentum coming in from the win over Chattanooga. But now it's you just lost a mobile. You are fighting Buffalo, who have proven themselves to be one of the toughest teams in the entire league that have just gotten a few unlucky losses due to their scheduling. And I don't exactly think Encino has enough in the tank to make it through this game. The Florida City men in Sioux Falls playing in the uh, closer streamed game. Sioux Falls winning this, I think, would be a big boost to the division. It gives a lot more hope for those three teams, Topeka, Sioux Falls, and Portland, to survive. And also would set up the alarm bells for Florida City, potentially making them get themselves back in gear. But a win for Florida City doesn't knock out Sioux Falls. They'd be able to make it if Florida City... Well, they'd be able to make it if nobody of National West makes eight wins and they win out, but... It puts them on the same chopping block as New England and Rosemont, where they're not that bad to have to compete for the tank bowl, but they're not good enough to make playoffs. Just a very poor season. Horsington played Tampa Bay, a game that really does not matter that much. It's Horsington at 8-4. and four. They're already close to playoff status. Winning here, I guess, puts them half a game above Massillon, which helps. Doesn't really matter too greatly. Meanwhile, for Tampa Bay, if Buffalo wins, then they have nothing to play for. So, may as well call this a free win for the Seas. Finally, Portland and Akihabara. Both teams, middle of their divisions, trying to make their name still. Akihabara are a game, I believe a half a game ahead, sorry, of Hell and Victoria. About one and a half games back from the top two teams in National West. So this could go either way. It's two middling teams in their respective divisions. But it's just that tough of you have only one team in the entire national conference who look playoff confirmed. And even then, they just lost two in a row. Meanwhile, you have in the American conference, Memphis are all but confirmed. And it's a scrum between Mobile, Burbank, Buffalo, Massillon, and Horsington right now for that final three spots, Chattanooga has an outside looking in. Like, they're, their window's closing, but they're not out of it yet. Orlando and Santa Clara technically aren't out. Tampa and Encino maybe could make it. It's just going to be weird for any of those teams to really make playoffs. Uh, I do remember, though, if Sioux Falls and Topeka win... I think how that would go because they've done 12. Hmm. So if Sioux Falls wins, Florida City goes down to 8 and 4, and they go up to 6 and 7. So Florida City 
would still, no matter what, hold above New England or Rosemont. So if I'm those two teams, I'd be wanting Sioux Falls to lose and Topeka to lose to... Oh, no, Topeka don't play. What? Oh, my name is Portland to lose to Akihabara. That's really the only way they're going to stay alive. Those two win. They move to 6-7. and seven. Topeka and Sioux Falls... Well, sorry, Portland, Sioux Falls, and I guess Topeka would only need one win to actually eliminate New England and Rosemont, because then it would just go to tiebreaker seven and nines, and New England and Rosemont's lost to them consistently. The very short rundown for Exile left. Not really much to talk about. It's just a very clean cut week for week thirteen. Nothing too crazy ended up happening. Pittsburgh being eliminated, I mean, deserved, but not anything major. And then week 14 just is a breather week for a lot of teams to try to collect themselves and figure out how they're going to get through this last four-week stretch before playoffs. So, till then, see you all at the stream tonight at 8 p.m.